This is the Chasm Fiend, and I was so nervous to paint this miniature, but I'm happy with how it turned out. I was able to leverage what I learned from painting my DIY Chasm Fiend from a few years ago, and I was able to paint this one in a fraction of the time that I was expecting. And so in this video, I'm going to give you the steps that I went through so you can get it done within a single painting session. Anywhere between two to three hours is all you'll need for this miniature. Shout out to Exploring the Cosmere channel. Him and I are collaborating on this video. He just released a Chasm Fiend deep dive video where he covers the habitat, the attributes, and most importantly for us painters, the coloring of these awesome beasts inside of the Stormlight Archive. So after this video, go check out his channel, give him, give him a subscribe. He puts out some great content. My favorite one so far is the Missing Shard Blades video he did. That blew my mind. He, did, he puts out some really good content. So let's dive in. So here we're taking the miniature and we are taking the back side of an X-Acto blade and we are carving off any of the mold lines that are left over from the factory. So this is a very important step. These mold lines will be will not be covered up by paint. They will only be exaggerated by paint. So take your time, get rid of any excess mold lines around the miniature. Now that it's cleaned up, we're gonna spray paint it. Now, if you don't know why we're doing this, go check out my previous video about where to get a spray can and why you need one here. Because most of this model is gonna be black, we're gonna get a black spray can and this will save you a ton of time. It is well worth the $10 that you might spend on the spray can because you can use it on this miniature, but you can also use it on the other miniatures that you have from the boxes. All right, we got our Chasm Fiend. We have our spray can, I've, I've shook it up a lot. We got good weather. We got our plastic bag. So put one hand in the plastic bag. Grab your Chasm Fiend. That. Make sure it's all shook up. And about this far away, you're just gonna start spraying it. Make sure you get underneath as well, because you do not want to have to paint that. So it should look like this. You can see that it looks like a lot of the details are covered up, but those should dry out nicely for you. Um, I, I can see some dripping parts right here, maybe a little bit too much, but we'll see what it looks like when it dries. Okay, so now that it is dry, you can see here that there are some globs on the, I don't even know what those are called, those things are in the front, the little pincers on the front. So we're going through with our X-Acto blade again and we're cutting off any of those globs that are left over from the spray paint. That's because most of the spray was coming at the front of the miniature and so it just kind of collected there. And continue, continuing to go around looking for any other spots where some of the spray paint might have pooled. So after you spray paint a miniature, I often will have missed some spots and so I will come back through with a black paint. You can use matte black from the starter kit and you can go in and make those corrections. As you're going around, you'll probably be swapping between your black paint brush and your X-Acto blade as you find different remains and fill in different spots along the miniature. Now the color of the spray paint and matte black may be slightly different from my from what I saw, they were very close. And what we're gonna do to the miniature later with all the highlights and the dry brushing will cover up those differences really well. So you don't need to worry about covering the whole model with this new black paint. I will note I am using a large black brush. Sorry. I will note that I'm using a large brush. And so again, this is from just the hobby store. I picked up a set of brushes and this is one of the biggest ones in the set. And I'm just slathering on that paint wherever it needs to go. So where I was holding the miniature while I was spraying, you can see that the gray is popping through. So you can go back through with this black paint and cover those up. This part isn't necessary. I used a slightly blue black paint that I had in my inventory 
and I am coloring in more of the fleshy parts of the chasm fiend and really the only parts that are on the front claws but also on the joints between the carapace so again this is not necessary this just gives you a little bit more contrast between the fleshy parts and the carapace okay for the base i just went with the dark brown from the starter set and right after i started painting this i wish that they had separated the chasm fiend from the base when they sent these out and this is because getting into back underneath the claws and, and the legs is so hard uh, you'll see it as i come up on it but in in war in, in war gaming you'll usually get multi-part plastic kits and so you'll you you can glue the different pieces together and when you have a centerpiece model like this usually you will break it out into different sub assemblies so you would have the chasm fiend and then you have the base they'd be separate you'd, you'd be able to paint each of them separately and then at the end you glue them all together and you have a you, you have more control over the the crevices the underbelly of the chasm fiend and the top of the base right so in this situation it's all glued together i didn't want to risk popping off the chasm fiend i didn't want to break anything on here so i just went with it and i just put the the dark brown in every single spot i could now you're gonna get a lot of overlap with the chasm feed itself and so don't worry about that we can come back through and get any of those with black later on so you see that the brown is not getting full coverage number one this is because it is a black primer and it usually takes a couple more coats to to cover up that black primer and ad and additionally i have watered it down which is what you always need to do you need to thin your paints right you don't want to glob on the paint unnecessarily so thinning it down gives you a nice smooth coat and you're going to do a couple of these coats uh, as you go along the great thing about this is that it's a big miniature so by the time you get around to where you had the first coat it's already dry and so you can just go around the model two or three times so you see here i'm trying to get in between the claws and i'm making a mess it is not looking good down there and so i'm i'm jamming in the paintbrush and actually causing a lot of damage to the paintbrush by doing that because you don't want to be poking your miniature with a sharp point of a paintbrush because that will just get the paint and push it back into the bristles and so this is really bad for your paintbrush but as we mentioned previously we have cheap paintbrushes because we're mediocre painters and so we can just go get some more if, if this paintbrush is ruined journey before destination there must be sacrifices so here I pulled out one of my more well-used brushes to get into those nooks and crannies below the claws. So I wasn't as nervous poking in and, and ruining the paintbrush because it was already ruined. That's something you learn in miniature painting is you never want to get rid of a paintbrush. You can always find a use for them later on, such as this, such as making it making the paintbrush even worse by just jamming in that brown paint onto the base. And you don't need to be clean, and so it's totally fine. You don't need crisp lines, is what I'm saying. And so it's totally fine having a less than ideal point on your paintbrush at this point. So here you really see that thinning down the, the paint and putting on thin layers really gives a smooth finish to this rock and it saves you paint so the more you thin it down the less paint you're using and so you can save some of that dark brown for your next miniature now you might be wondering why i'm not painting the rim of the base brown this comes from my time being a war gamer is that in war gaming you you want to keep all of the base rims the same color and so my Alethi army has a black rim 
And so I'm going to keep the black rim on the Chasm Fiend as well. When you have a big army on the field, having the same rim color gives a cohesive nature to your army. And that is what we're going for here, right? We're here to play war games in addition to the RPG once it comes out, but mostly for war games. Okay, we're calling that dark brown done. That took us about three layers and it, that takes the longest time of the whole process here. Okay, so now that that's dry, I'm going through and using strong tone to add that contrast to our miniature, to the base. And so it's gonna soak into the crevices. There's not that many crevices, it's a pretty smooth uh, rock sculpt, but it will, it will add some contrast to the miniature. Sometimes you might see my Apple Watch in there. And during this painting phase, I was listening to Wheel of Time, book nine, Path of Daggers. I believe that's book nine. Anyway, Wheel of Time, man, those books take a long time. But it's good. It's my second time reading through it, and I'm excited to get to where Sanderson takes over. Okay, back to painting. Uh, I pulled out a makeup brush. I went to Walmart and bought one for about a dollar and a half. A uh, very cheap makeup brush. The bristles are very short and fairly stiff, um, but also soft. And what I'm doing is you get uh, the, I think it's medium tan, light tan, whichever one comes in the star set. And I get some paint on the brush and then I rub it into the paper towel. And then I gently rub back and forth along the base to catch any of the edges. Um, you want to start light until you get the hang of how this works. Um, and so you see I'm not, I'm not dragging the brush along the edges. I am quickly going back and forth to catch those raised areas with any of the dry paint that is on the makeup brush. So this is how you get that, um, I don't know, weathered effect or uh, how you can get the natural feel to this miniature because it's nature, right? Especially on the base, this is a rock. And so we don't want to have crisp lines on the rock. We want to have more of a textured feel. And that's where our dry brushing technique can be very valuable. Now this is honestly my first time using a makeup brush to do this. Usually I've used a, a shorter uh, paintbrush. And I will say the difference here is awesome you want to spend the money on a very simple makeup brush, or if you already have one, just use an old one, um, or ask your significant other very nicely if you can have one of their makeup brushes. You don't want to give this back to them after what you're <laughs> doing with this paint. So for the base, right, we had dark brown base coat, we had strong tone shade, and we're just coming through with a very light, uh, medium tan, or I think it's light tan. I'm sorry, I don't remember the paint off the top of my head. A light tan dry brush. And there we go. I'm gonna call that base all right. So what I'm doing here is, as I mentioned, getting the brown back in the underneath the claws back there was very difficult and very sloppy. And so I'm coming back and bringing black onto the claws, onto the legs, on the car on, onto the carapace, wherever that brown uh, kind of got messed up. So in miniature painting, I make mistakes all the time. It is okay. You can always come back and paint over it with the original color. This is why using thin coats, thin thinning your paint is very important because you won't be globbing up the details by just going over with thin coats. You'll especially want the front four claws to be very precise. To me, that is one of the most distinguishing fact features of the, I guess the legs, the appendages of the chasm fiend. 
So you want to make sure those claws are looking crisp and clean. Here I am cleaning up that rim of the base. This is something you may want to do at the very end because as I was continuing to paint, sometimes my hand, the oil on my hand would rub the paint off of the rim. Um, so if you want, you might wear gloves or latex gloves while you're painting so the oil from your hands doesn't take off the paint that you've already put on the miniature. Just a, such a massive miniature that you can't really put it on a, a painting holder that we can with the smaller miniatures. And here I'm going through and touching up those fleshy parts with that uh, bluish black color that I have. Okay, so here I attempted to do a edge highlight on the fleshy parts, but I didn't like it. And so I shifted over to the dry brush. And this is a lighter gray. So you can, you can mix the matte white and matte black to create a, a gray of sorts. And I went around and, and started highlighting different parts. Again, with that dry brush, you're getting some dry paint, rubbing it into the paper towel. Uh, some pro painters will say, oh, you can't use a paper towel for dry brushing. We're not pro painters, all right? We are amateur painters. We're trying to make this look all right and a good, good from a distance, right? So we're, again, we're going around in circle motions, going back and forth with this dry brush to catch those raised areas to give it this natural feel, natural highlight. So here I'm coming in with gray, straight up gray. You can, again, you can make this by mixing your matte black and matte white. And I started attacking the carapace with this gray dry brush. This is where it gets really exciting, right? Because all of a sudden, you see the details start popping. You're like, oh, there's carapace here. There's different layers. It's, it's kind of interlocking with each other. And it's, it's very natural. So when I did my DIY Chasm Fiend, I went in and I edge highlighted all of the different carapace layers. And that took forever. Okay, this dry brush technique, it's not as crisp. crisp it's not as clean. But if you think about it, it this is a... Uh, it's not a man-made thing. This is a, a nature. It's a beast. It It's not going to be crisp and clean. And so this dry brush really gives it that gritty feel. So remember, in miniature painting, it's all about getting those layers to line up. So we, we have, on the Chasm Fiend itself, we have black for those fleshy parts. If you want to go for it, we have that bluish black color. Now we're coming through with this gray color to catch some more of the raised areas. And then as you saw in the video or the pictures at the beginning, we're going to come back with our red to give it to catch even the higher levels. Because yes, the Chasm Fiend is supposed to be black, an inky black color. But if you think about it, even as I'm moving the miniature around, right, you see the light reflecting off the miniature. When the Chasm Fiend is coming out of the chasm, it's not going to be this black, this uh, pitch black thing. It's not going to be an ink spread coming out of there. It is, the light's going to be reflecting off different pieces. And that's what this dry brush is doing. It's, it's catching that light and it, emphasizing it for our viewers. Okay, so for red, um, Carapace Red is the only one that we have in the starter kit. However... I absolutely hate that color. Uh, it, it does not operate the way I want it to. And so I have a color from Citadel, the Citadel range called Mephiston Red. Um, you can get another red from, uh, from a store or you can try to make Carapace Red work here. Um, I, I just have a hard time with Carapace Red and so I went with a color that I really like with, which is Mephiston Red. And here I'm doing just another dry brush. This is going to be lighter than the gray. It's going to cover up most of the gray stuff that we did previously. Um, but that will give it that raised area, a really cool, uh, 
uniqueness that I want on my chasm fiend. It's like I, I just didn't want this black and gray beast, right? I wanted this red to pop. Thinking back, my Alethi army is blue, so maybe it would make more sense to do a blue highlight to give some cohesion with the army. But, you know, I feel like Alethi soldiers usually fight chasm fiends, so we shouldn't... Anyway, maybe I'll need to create another army, our, our Parshendi army with red, and then this chasm fiend will fit right in. Now, again, dry brushing is sloppy. Uh, you'll get some different thicker paints on different pieces, thinner paints on others. In my opinion, that's okay. We're learning how to paint. This is a very good exercise to go through on, on how to practice your brush control. If you want to practice on something else before you jump on your miniature, go for it. I'm of the opinion that I like seeing my journey as I paint different miniatures, and so I can kind of see over the course of time my first miniatures to my current miniatures. I like seeing my progression. And so even if you make mistakes, be like, hey, that's totally fine. I don't want to take the time to fix them because I got other stuff to do with my life. Using the gray highlight beneath it really brings out that red to make it pop. So you could do this without the gray highlight underneath, but I would I, I don't think it would turn out as well. The gray highlight really emphasizes this red very nicely. And again, if you want to use a different highlight color, go for it. You can use blue. You can use purple. I chose red because I love this color. And then as a finishing touch, I'm going to come in and paint the eyeballs white. Now, in the lore, in the books, I believe the eye should be green. Originally, I tried to do some green glow effect. It did not pan out well. And so I'm just going in and, and just filling in those holes with white, pure white, to make it look like it's glowing. And then I'm going back through and adding an edge highlight, a very light edge highlight to the four claws there to uh, give it that, that pop of those claws. If you want to get really fancy, you go around and do all the claws, but I just wanted to focus in on the, on the first four limbs there. There you have it. That's the Chasm Fiend. I hope you enjoyed it. What I really liked about this paint job was that it was quick and it looks decent, right? We're not here to win a competition. We're here to get painted miniatures onto the tabletop. And this filled that role very well. Again, be sure to check out Exploring the Cosmere channel uh, for more information about a deep dive into a Chasm Fiend and its habitat and all that good stuff. And be on the lookout for my next video.